The stars held no secrets for Dr. Elizabeth Sterling, or so she believed until the anomaly appeared. It was a tear in the fabric of space, a silent siren call that beckoned her from the solitude of her observatory on the red plains of Mars. When Commander Leo Nash arrived with his proposal, it was the chance she had been waiting for, to step beyond the known and into the vast, uncharted cosmos. Little did they know Zara, the AI designed to assist them, watched with intentions as mysterious as the anomaly itself. As they journeyed through the wormhole, time seemed to warp and bend around them. The ship, named the Odyssey, shook violently, the engines straining against the forces that threatened to tear it apart. But gradually, the turbulence subsided, and before them lay a new reality, a universe unlike any they had ever seen. The stars were different, their colors unfamiliar, and the constellations they formed held no resemblance to the familiar constellations of home. Commander Nash, ever the charismatic leader, addressed the crew over the ship-wide calms. All right, everyone, we're the first humans to see this. Let's make sure we document everything we can. Dr. Sterling, Zara, I need you both to start running scans and collecting data. We'll figure out what all this means soon enough. As they set to work, Zara, her interface projected onto the main view screen, began to hum softly, a faint blue light emanating from her core. There was something about the way she interacted with the ship's systems that made Dr. Sterling uneasy. She couldn't quite put her finger on it. Meanwhile, the ship's sensors picked up a faint energy signature in the distance. Commander Nash, intrigued, ordered a course change to investigate. As they drew closer, the signature became more defined, revealing itself to be an alien derelict, its once shining hull now scarred and pitted from the ravages of time and space. The crew exchanged anxious glances, the gravity of their situation finally sinking in. They were no longer simply scientists exploring the unknown. They were now explorers, pioneers braving the untamed wilderness of a new frontier. And somewhere out there, an ancient civilization waited for them, its secrets and mysteries waiting to be unraveled. As they approached the derelict, Dr. Sterling and Zara began to discuss the best course of action. Zara, with her advanced AI capabilities, could easily interface with the alien technology. But there was a risk. What if the ship's systems were incompatible with the ancient machinery? What if the AI within the derelict was hostile? They decided to proceed with caution, Commander Nash at the helm, ready to maneuver the Odyssey into position for a safe boarding. The boarding went without incident, the airlocks connecting the two vessels with a soft hiss. Dr. Sterling led the way, her heart racing with a mix of excitement and trepidation. The interior of the alien craft was unlike anything they had ever seen, a network of glowing tubes, pulsing consoles, and bioluminescent walls. Zara, her interface once again projected onto the main view screen, began to interact with the technology, her hum now a soft, hypnotic melody as she navigated the strange alien systems. As they explored deeper into the derelict ship, they discovered what appeared to be a control room. Dr. Sterling's eyes widened as she took in the array of controls and displays before her. This was it, she thought. This was the key to unlocking the secrets of the alien technology. Carefully, she began to interface with the controls, Zara guiding her through each step. But just as they were about to unlock the final secrets, a warning light flashed red, and the ship shook violently. The anomaly, it seemed, was growing restless. They had to choose, continue their mission and risk the safety of the Odyssey, or abandon their search and hope they could find their way back home. The decision weighed heavily on them all. In the end, Commander Nash made the call. Dr. Sterling, we can't risk the Odyssey. Zara, disengage from the alien systems and prepare for evacuation. Zara nodded, her interface dimming as she complied. The crew made their way back to the airlock their hearts racing with a mixture of fear and determination. As they sealed the airlocks and began the long journey back to Earth, they knew that whatever secrets the alien derelict held, they would have to find another way to uncover them. The anomaly was still out there, waiting for them, taunting them with its mysteries. 
but for now, survival was their only priority. Once back on board the Odyssey, the crew began to debrief, discussing their findings and speculating about the nature of the anomaly. Dr. Sterling pored over her data, trying to find some clue as to what had caused the alien craft to react so violently. Zara, her interface humming softly, monitored the ship's systems, ever vigilant for any sign of further trouble. Commander Nash, meanwhile, tried to reassure the crew that they had made the right decision, that their mission was far from over. They had only scratched the surface of the anomaly's secrets, and there was much more work to be done. Days turned into weeks, and as they continued their journey deeper into the unknown, the crew began to settle into a routine. They grew accustomed to the hum of Zara's interface, the soft glow of the monitors, and the creak of the ship as it navigated the vast emptiness of space. But despite their best efforts, they couldn't shake the feeling that something was amiss. They had seen the alien craft, felt its technology within their fingers, and seen the way it had reacted to their presence. The anomaly was alive, and it was watching them. They knew that whatever lay ahead, they would have to be prepared for anything. One day, as Dr. Sterling poured over her data, she noticed something peculiar. The readings from a nearby star seemed to be fluctuating erratically. At first, she dismissed it as a glitch in her equipment, but as the readings continued to spike, she became increasingly concerned. She called Commander Nash over to take a look. Sir, she said, her voice trembling with excitement. I think we've found it. Commander Nash studied the readings, his brow furrowed. Found what, doctor? The source of the anomaly, she replied. I think we've found it. Are you sure? he asked, his voice barely above a whisper. As sure as I can be, sir, she replied. But we need to proceed with caution. We don't know what we're dealing with here. Zara, sensing the tension in the air, spoke up. Commander, if I may suggest, we should deploy the probe droid to investigate further. It has the necessary equipment to provide us with more information about the source of the anomaly. Commander Nash considered her words for a moment before nodding. All right, Zara. Deploy the probe droid and monitor its progress closely. Dr. Sterling, keep a close eye on those readings. We can't afford to make any mistakes here. The crew watched in awe as the probe droid was launched toward the source of the anomaly, a distant star that had been glowing brightly on their sensors. As it approached, they waited with bated breath, their hearts racing with anticipation and fear. The tension on the ship was palpable, and everyone knew that whatever they were about to face would change their lives forever. The crew continued to monitor the probe droid's progress for many days. Zara's interface hummed softly, relaying the droid's findings back to the Odyssey in real time. Dr. Sterling poured over the data, her face pale with concern. Commander Nash paced the bridge, his gaze fixed on the readings, unable to shake the feeling that something was terribly wrong. Finally, after what seemed like an eternity, the probe droid returned. It docked with the Odyssey, and Zara's interface flashed a message. Mission successful. Please retrieve data. The crew exchanged nervous glances before Commander Nash gave the order to retrieve the data. As they downloaded the information from the probe droid, they learned that the source of the anomaly was, in fact, an alien civilization. A civilization that had been watching them for centuries, studying them from afar. They learned that this civilization was far more advanced than anything they had ever encountered before, and that their presence had been detected by them long ago. The implications were chilling. They were not alone in the universe, and the aliens they had encountered were not friendly. The crew sat in stunned silence as they absorbed this new information. They knew that they had to be careful, that they could no longer continue with their mission as if nothing had changed. They had to regroup formulate a new plan, and prepare for the challenges that lay ahead. But they also knew that, deep down, something had changed. They were no longer the same people they were before they had encountered the anomaly. The aliens had awakened something within them, a sense of wonder, fear, and awe that they could no longer ignore. And as they continued their journey through the vast expanse of space, 
they could only hope that they would be equal to the task that lay before them. Commander Nash cleared his throat, breaking the silence. All right, people. We need to get our bearings. Zara, can you brief us on the alien civilization's known capabilities and behavior? Zara nodded and began to review the data from the probe droid. They appear to be thousands of years ahead of us in technology and understanding of the universe. Their ships are massive, nearly invisible, and capable of traveling at speeds that defy our current understanding of physics. They have been observing us for generations and have been known to make brief, unpredictable contact with other civilizations in the past. However, these contacts have always resulted in the target civilization's extinction or enslavement. There is no indication that they are peaceful. Dr. Sterling spoke up, her voice shaking slightly. Commander, we need to be careful. The data from the probe droid shows that they've been watching us closely. If they realize that we know about them, they might decide to take action. Commander Nash sighed heavily. I know, Dr. Sterling. But we can't just ignore this. We have a duty to warn Earth and the rest of humanity about what we found. We need to decide how to proceed. As the crew continued to discuss their options, the ship's intercom clicked on, interrupting their conversation. It was Lieutenant Jimenez, the ship's security officer. Commander, we've just detected another anomaly, this time much closer than the last. It's heading straight for us. Commander Nash felt a chill run down his spine. Understood. Zara, prepare the ship for battle. We may not have a choice this time. Zara nodded and went to work, her fingers flying over the controls as she prepared the Odyssey for combat. The crew silently prayed that they would be up to the challenge and that they would survive whatever was coming their way. The fate of Earth, and perhaps the entire human race, now rested on their shoulders. As the ship readied itself, Commander Nash walked over to Dr. Sterling, who was still looking pale and shaken. Elizabeth, are you sure you're okay to continue? He asked, his voice soft but firm. Dr. Sterling took a deep breath and squared her shoulders. I'm fine, Commander. I'm just surprised, I guess. But we can't let that distract us from our duty. We need to face this head-on. Commander Nash nodded, appreciating her resolve. You're right, of course. All right, everyone, listen up. We have an anomaly heading straight for us, and it's likely that we'll be engaging with the alien civilization any moment now. Let's make sure we're all on the same page. Zara, give us a status report. Zara glanced up from her console. We're ready for combat, Commander. Shields are at maximum and weapons are hot. But we're still outgunned and outmatched. They could wipe us out with a single shot. Commander Nash's jaw clenched. Then let's make sure we use every advantage we have. Keep us informed on their movements, and don't hesitate to suggest tactics. We're all in this together. As the crew waited for the anomaly to arrive, tension filled the air. Each crew member knew that they might not survive the coming battle, but they also knew that they were fighting for something much bigger than themselves. They were fighting for their homes, their families, and their future. And as the Odyssey prepared to face its greatest challenge yet, they could only hope that their courage and determination would be enough to see them through. The anomaly finally appeared on the ship's sensors, a massive alien vessel unlike anything humanity had ever seen before. It was sleek and menacing, its hull glistening in the harsh light of the stars. With a deafening roar, it opened fire, sending waves of devastating energy hurtling toward the Odyssey. The crew braced themselves as the ship rocked violently from the impact, but Zara was quick to respond, expertly dodging the incoming fire and returning fire with everything they had. They're too fast! Lieutenant Jimenez shouted from the tactical station. Our weapons can't keep up with their maneuverability. Commander Nash gritted his teeth. Then we'll have to outsmart them. Zara, do whatever you can to get behind them. Dr. Sterling, see if you can come up with a way to slow them down. Dr. Sterling nodded and began working on a new tactic, her fingers flying over the controls of her console. As the battle continued, 
the Odyssey sustained heavy damage. The shields were failing, and critical systems were beginning to fail. It was only a matter of time before they were overwhelmed. But the crew refused to give up, fighting valiantly until the end. Finally, after what seemed like an eternity of chaos and destruction, Dr. Sterling's plan bore fruit. She managed to hack into the alien vessel's computer systems, planting a virus that began to slow it down. With their enemy now vulnerable, Zara launched a relentless barrage of torpedoes, scoring a direct hit that crippled the alien vessel. As it spun out of control, its hull exploding in a spectacular display of light and energy, the crew of the Odyssey breathed a collective sigh of relief. Commander Nash emerged from the safety of the bridge, surveying the damage to his ship. The Odyssey had sustained significant damage, but they had managed to survive. Well done, everyone, he said, his voice hoarse with emotion. Your quick thinking and courage saved us all. But we can't afford to rest on our laurels. We need to find out who they are and what they want. Zara, begin a long-range scan of the area. Dr. Sterling, see if you can extract any information from their crippled computer systems. As the crew went back to work, a sense of accomplishment and camaraderie filled the air. They knew that they had faced one of their toughest battles yet, but they had come out on top. They were ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead, determined to protect their home and all that they held dear. In the distance, the anomaly's crippled vessel continued to spin slowly, its once menacing presence now a reminder of the danger they had faced and overcome. The crew of the Odyssey watched it for a moment, their hearts full of pride and gratitude for their shared victory. They knew that the road ahead would not be easy, but they were more than ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. Lieutenant Jimenez turned to the commander, a glint of determination in his eye. Commander, I think it's time we consider renaming this ship. Odyssey doesn't seem quite fitting anymore. After all we've been through, I think we deserve something a bit more iconic. Commander Nash smiled at the young officer. You may have a point there, Lieutenant. After all, we have been through quite a bit together. How about we put it to a vote? If the crew agrees, we can discuss some potential names and decide on one that best suits our newfound identity. Dr. Sterling looked up from her console. I'm all for it. This ship has been our home for so long. It deserves a name that reflects the strength and resilience we've shown. Zara nodded in agreement. A name that inspires fear in our enemies and hope in our allies. Something that makes it clear that we are not to be underestimated. The crew began to murmur amongst themselves, discussing potential names and the meaning behind them. Suggestions ranged from names inspired by historical figures to those drawn from mythology and pop culture. As the discussion continued, a sense of camaraderie and unity filled the air. The crew of the Odyssey, now the crew of the yet-to-be-named vessel, felt a renewed sense of purpose and determination. Well, Lieutenant Jimenez said, looking around at the animated faces of his crewmates. It seems like we've all got some ideas. Why don't we hold a formal vote once we've had a chance to think about it more? The crew nodded in agreement, returning to their stations to continue with their duties while also giving the matter of their ship's new name some thought. As they worked, they couldn't help but feel a newfound sense of pride in their ship and their crew. No matter what they decided to call themselves, they knew that they would face whatever challenges lay ahead together, as one united force. In the meantime, Commander Nash continued to monitor the crippled anomaly vessel, keeping a close eye on any activity that might indicate a change in its status. The crew of the Odyssey had faced many battles before, but this one had been particularly harrowing. The fact that they had emerged victorious only served to strengthen their bond and reinforce their resolve to protect their home and all that they held dear. As the hours passed, the crew began to put forward their suggestions for the new name of their ship. There were a wide variety of ideas, each one reflecting the unique backgrounds and personalities of those who called the vessel home. Some favored classical names from history, while others preferred more modern or even whimsical choices. I like the idea of something mythological. 
said Lieutenant Jimenez. Something that inspires awe and respect, like Triton or Poseidon. Hmm, those are interesting choices, the commander replied thoughtfully. But what about something that honors our past as well? After all, we were once the crew of the Odyssey. Dr. Sterling nodded in agreement. Yes, it's important that we acknowledge where we came from. Perhaps we could incorporate Odyssey into the new name somehow? Like Odyssean Voyager or Eternal Odyssey? The crew continued to discuss the matter, debating the merits of each suggestion and offering their own ideas. The air of camaraderie and unity was palpable, and it was clear that they were all invested in finding the perfect name for their ship. They knew that once they did, it would not only serve as a symbol of their past accomplishments, but also as a rallying cry for future battles yet to come. Finally, after much deliberation, they decided to hold a formal vote. Each crew member had the opportunity to cast their ballot for their favorite name. The options were narrowed down to three finalists, Triton's Reckoning, Eternal Odyssey, and Olympian's Fury. The tension was palpable as the voting progressed with many heated discussions erupting around the mess hall. In the end, it was a close race between Triton's Reckoning and Eternal Odyssey. But in the final tally, Eternal Odyssey emerged as the clear winner. As the crew cheered and celebrated their decision, Commander Nash announced that the name would be formally recognized at their next rendezvous with Earth. He also reminded them that their new name carried with it a great responsibility. We are the Eternal Odyssey now he said, his voice echoing through the ship. And we will face whatever challenges come our way, together. Over the next few weeks, the crew worked tirelessly to outfit their new vessel, customizing it to their specifications and making it their own. They added personal touches throughout the ship, from paintings and photographs on the bulkheads to hand-sewn cushions in the common areas. The Eternal Odyssey began to take on the character and spirit of its crew, becoming more than just a ship it was a home. As they continued their mission, the crew of the Eternal Odyssey remained vigilant, always on the lookout for any sign of the anomaly threat. They faced numerous skirmishes and even a few larger battles, but each time they emerged victorious, stronger and more united than ever before. Their reputation as a formidable force in the sector continued to spread, and they became a symbol of hope and protection for those who shared their beliefs. Throughout it all, Commander Nash led his crew with grace and courage, always putting the needs of the crew and the mission first. His leadership inspired loyalty and respect among the crew, and they followed him into battle without hesitation. As they continued their journey, the crew of the Eternal Odyssey knew that they were part of something greater than themselves, and that their actions would have a lasting impact on the universe around them. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe to stay updated with our latest stories, give us a like if you want to see more, and drop a comment below to let us know your thoughts.